Welcome back, my friends. We're now into episode three, and we're going to work a little bit more on adding some functionality and some items to our, our model. Uh, first thing that comes to mind is that we need to have some way of being able to track or retrieve node numbers or beam numbers. So we need to come up with some sort of numbering system. So that will be our first kind of our, our first approach to doing this. And since a lot of these informational pieces are basically using reusing the same information, we're going to kind of play a little bit with uh, either some interfaces or some base classes that will that things like our nodes and our beam classes will inherit from that will handle all of our our indexing and stuff for that first. Now, one thing we want to go take a look at before we do all of that, though, is we're going to go back into our interfaces. And as I was editing the last video, I realized that I kind of made a bit of an issue. And I want to see if we can fix this. Instead of doing this as a public class, I want to make this as a public interface. All right. And hopefully that will. Oops. And now it's going to warn that. Uh, so can I just do a public virtual on that? It's not going to let me do it. Are you? All right. What are we on here? Since it's an interface, I don't need to do that. There we go. So that will be our kind of our promise, if you will. And this one forth because I noticed as I was, as we were working on this that I was writing those functions in by hand, but the the IDE wasn't providing, you know, sense of hey, you're not following the contract with this interface. So this will solve. It's a minor thing. It really that won't affect our functionality much. But uh, let me add a note here. Um, this is our routine to draw um, a drawable object. So we'll do that. Okay, so that solves that. If I run this, everything should oh, we blew up. Why did we blow up? Ah, yep. And now because of that, it's not part of a contract. We don't need to override it. Okay, so that gives me that one. And then again, it's going to do it again on the other draw. So let's do that as well. And there, we can see we're back to kind of our basic functionality. All right, so that's amazing what you see when you're not in the middle of recording stuff, right? Okay, so now let's go through and let's start thinking about what we need to do for our for our model objects. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to, let's see. So we'll go into our models. Let's add a class. And let's just call this something like a base VM object okay and the way that we're going to do this is we're going to use um, static indexes to basically increment every time one of these is created all right so if i go through and i do this here we've got our so I'll make this as a, a public okay and we're going to inherit from our shape i think although now that i think about it let me try to do this a little bit differently. So let's not inherit from shape, but let's just go ahead and get the, the numbering in here. Because on the first go around on this, I was using the shape objects within WPF, but I think I can get a lot more functionality if instead of doing them as shapes, I do them as user controls. Because if we want to be able to highlight or drag and drop or do things like that, I think things will be a lot easier with, with the ability um, based off of user controls instead of these primitive shapes. Um, I think famous last words, right? So let's find out. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a private static double. We're gonna call this guy as current index, and that's gonna be um, we'll start off numbering at zero, okay? And then we're gonna have a private double, and then his actual index is this guy. So we're gonna start him at zero, and then as we start to to create our our constructor for any of these VM objects. Let's do a CTOR, tab twice, that gets me this. And now I can say M index is our current index. And then we can increment the current index like this. So the member index is our object's ID on this. So eventually we may want to move this into some, some sort of GUID instead so that it's always unique. 
But for now, I'm just going to, anything that's drawable, we're just going to do it. Again, we're doing things kind of the brute force way here, and then we'll get clever and work on it a little bit more as we start to kind of proceed through there. All right. Uh, we're going to want some sort of setter or a getter to get this. So let's do a public double. Probably don't need double precision on this. Probably could get away with an integer because I don't foresee needing a thousand items. But just in case, we'll, you know, memory is cheap, right? So let's do that. So let's return m index. Okay. And then we're going to do a private set on this so that I can't change the numbers. Once it's created, index, and that's going to be a value. Okay, and that will get us there. And that will get us on that. So that's kind of every object now will have this, this system of it. So when it fires the, the base constructor, it will automatically update its, update its, uh, its index number. Okay, and that will help us be able to find things. I'm going to remove all the unused stuff. Okay, and so this is a base class for all model objects in the VM diagrammer program. Handles unique ID creation. And we may add some other features to this as well. All right, so that's our base VM object. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go back to our node. And we are going to inherit from a base VM object. And then, obviously, we're going to implement the interface. So, oops. If I could spell object right, that would definitely help. There we go. That gets us this one. And then I can take him, and I'll put him on the beam also. I'll put it here. There we go. And so now we've got our, our base uh, VM object. And so what will happen is it will fire the base model object to create the index, and then it will go through its own creation process for assigning the nodes just like we did before. And so what we can do with this is we can kind of, you know, even now with this little piece of information, we could actually make it where we could write that information on the screen just to kind of test our numbering on that. And that might not be a bad idea. So let me go grab my reference sheet here real quick. All right. So let's go back to our, let's close that, close that, close our interface, close our base class. We're going to go up to our helpers. Let's grab our drawing helpers. And so this is the, the item where we were drawing our basic objects, you know, our circles and our lines. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to add one for some simple text. Oops. And so let's do a public static uh, it's text. So let's just do it as a void. And we're going to do draw text. And we need our canvas. Okay, and then we're going to need our so double X, double Y, and do double Z. I mean, for now, it's zero, but if we ever turn this thing into a three-dimensional thing, this might be a useful utility just to leave it. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. And then, oh, yeah, duh. we need the string that we're going to write. Okay, so that will get us there. Okay. So that will get us that. And so let's draw text. Okay. Draw text. And so this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do a text block. Text block. Text block is a new text block. Sometimes this stuff's so much easier doing it in XAML, but again, we're trying to dynamically create stuff. So let's do text block dot. Ah, if I could type today. Oh my goodness. Our string. Okay, and then let's do text block dot font size let's just make it 12 12.0 for now let's do text block dot foreground this is what's going to set our color okay and that's going to be a new what if i could just do brushes dot 
black if that would just let me do that instead of having to make a solid color brush I can just call on that guy instead that might be a better way of doing all of these actually let's find out in fact we're going to take this guy and let's just see if I can do brushes.red on him see if I do a quick test never tried it this way it's got to thinking about that it works cool all right also saves us a little bit of memory right so this is Brush. So we're going to update our our circle. So that's brushes dot black. And if we come in and we do this, this is brushes dot white. That gets us that. There we go. And then what else do we need? Okay. Now figuring out where to put all of this. Well, for now we'll just leave it, and then let's just do a c dot children dot add, and then we'll do text block and that will get us that all right so now let's go back over not to that one we want to go to the code behind where we're creating stuff so we're just kind of testing stuff on here and then so um can i do mm -mm 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 -mm. Let's do drawing helpers. Oops, spell it right. Helpers dot. Okay. Draw text. And let's do. So we definitely want main. Whoa, go back. Main canvas. And then I need an X position. So let's just do it at, say, 50, 0, 0, and then do hello, and see if that works. Well, it's there. It's kind of hidden back behind us. I guess it didn't go far enough. How about 500? Why is it not going... It drew it at zero zero. Why did it do that? Can I do a fifty on you? All right. So why are you not going where you're supposed to? Oh, I do need that. Okay. Um. Yeah. The canvas sets because we're uh, so canvas set left. And we want to do text block, and then we're going to do X plus, because it defaulted to zero, zero. Duh. Okay. Let's just put it at X. And then we can do canvas.set top text block. And set that as Y, and that should allow us to put him on there. All right, so we don't quite need that at 50-50 anymore. Put him back at zero, because I don't, otherwise he'll be hiding behind what's already being drawn. There it is. Now it's moving a little bit. So I make this guy 500, make this guy 200, stop, rerun it. There it is. Now we're moving text around. So now I can, I've got an ability to add text to my canvas at the point that I want. Now, one thing to remember is, is that this is using the upper left um, as the insertion point for that. And, that. and that's fine for now. So we will set it. And eventually we'll probably want to set this up so that it does um, does our colors for us as well. You know, where we can where we can set a color. But for now, we'll set it as, you know, let's make it something so that it stands out in case it starts writing over tops of things. Let's see. What do we got? There we go. So there's our green. And so... All our text will be green, and eventually we'll get into kind of a layering system and turning things on and off as well. But for now, that gets us that piece. All right, so let's figure out what we can do for... So that gets us our test on that, so we don't need to do that anymore. So maybe what we do then is that when we tell an object to draw itself, maybe this guy... 
will do a drawing helper dot draw text and then we do c this dot x this dot y again we're not too worried about z dimensions we'll probably have to add that um, let's put it as a zero for now and then our string will be the index number so index dot two string and we'll set it as that all right so if i do that that should now number all of my nodes and you can see it's kind of hard to see i don't know if you can see it on the screen it's kind of doing a fact let's go back to our drawing helpers we're going to change the size to like 24. do this there we go a little bit bigger so we can kind of see things but that's where so you know if i wanted this number centered on it you can see that that's one of the problems that we're having on on being able to get that but we've got it okay and then likewise if we go back and look what you can see is it's doing node zero node one and then it skips to three but that's because the beams are catching are catching something as well so are are catching a, an index number which is what we want so let's go let's stop this let's go back to our beam all right and then in the draw helper on this guy this is the beauty of these drawing helpers is now i can just draw uh, so we're going to draw text we're going to see this dot start dot uh, it's not that it's going to be the average of the two so let's do a 0 0.5 times this dot start dot x plus this dot start dot y and 0. no 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 in dot x getting ahead of myself in dot x and then 0. 0.5 times this dot in dot or start dot y plus this dot in dot y and then close that and so c x y z zero and then index should this dot index it says that and then dot to string there we go and that should get us that so now we'll, this will also get us our so you can see they're all in there they're again they're kind of out of order because we did the nodes the way we did things that every two beams then we added a node but they're all now uniquely numbered on this, which is cool, because now when I start building this model, I can go search by that index number once I know it, and I should be able to pull it. And now when we start doing the user controls, one of the things that we'll have to look at is how do I come up with a, and maybe it's one of those things that when we make the control, we create the index number, you know, get like a uh, GUID number, and then make that the index number for the actual element itself and now i've got a way that when i click the control of being able to capture the model information back so we're starting to get a numbering system again we're just doing simple not integers but doubles at this point but that's kind of a kind of a kind of a big step being able to now distinguish between all of the items that it's drawing and we didn't skip anything how far down does that go so that will get us to there so it should go to 18 should be the last one because it starts at zero all right okay all right so that's what we got so cool. All right. So we've got indexing done. All righty. On to the next catastrophe. Okay. <laughs> no, seriously. Um, but that's kind of, but that's what this drawing helpers function is doing is it's just basically some simple tools that allow us to create the elements and add them back to the canvas at the location that we want. Um, like I say, if we go three dimensional, then we're going to have to start kind of worrying about the Z. But for now, I think I'm okay with, with what we have happening on that. So that's, um, that's what we got. I wonder if text is considered a shape. 
can I do return? I don't think it is, but let's just to make everything the same. Can I make that a shape? Yeah, but it's not. All right. Undo. So this guy is a little bit different. You know, that's more forgetting. Again, we'll probably want some error checking on string that if. Okay, maybe we do that now. If um, string equal equal string dot is null or empty, we can return out. We don't need to draw anything. about that. True if the value parameter is... It's been a while since I used this one. Let's do string that is null or empty string, that guy. That won't do it. So let's see if I go. Okay, so that still works. And that's the node writer. The beam writer is. This is kind of looking at me like we need to find a midpoint. Or to be able to. We might need to make some helpers, some geometry helpers on this one as well. Because I get a feel, I get a suspicion we're going to be doing that a lot. So that's right. In which case, we can just create a, a helper function for that. All right. So that gets us to this. Let's see. What else do we want to do? Let's see. How do we want to do this? Okay. So over in this, let's see. We're going to want to track the current mouse location. So let's do private point in current mouse location and that's going to be a new point let's, see. let's go make a setter let's do a public point current mouse point Do it that way. There we go. And as always, get in current mouse location. Gives me that one. And then we want to set our in current mouse location equal to value. So we'll go down to the end. Let's do a protected void main canvas mouse move. Actually, we'll have it stub it for us. Mouse, mouse move equals ming. That is what I want. Okay, so if I double click on that, then you can see that it stubbed it out for me here. The Windows input. That's a long label, but that's alright. Okay, and so for here, we can do current mouse location point is args or is our e dot 
get position within the main canvas. So that will, so now anytime I move the mouse, that will get us there. What we want to do is let's just test if this is working. And we will go back to our main window. We're going to add a text box. Text block. And all right, so we're going to go to our main window. We're going to implement. So this is an interface. It's always a little bit tricky. What's happened is, is that it drew itself with nothing to show. So it wasn't displaying anything. I believe this is what's happening. And then when I moved the mouse, it had no way of notifying itself that it, something had changed on us. So I property changed. Okay, so we want this. We're going to add our component model. Okay, and that's going to yell at me for not having implemented the interface. All right, so there's, so there's our interface for this. And then I need to create a function that is private void on property changed. String, oops, string, let's do property name. And then if property changed not equal to null, then we're going to create a property changed event, this, and then new property change the event args by the name of the property name. All right, and so that that should help to trigger things. So we've got that. And then what I can do is when we set the mouse location, I can just do on property changed and we'll grab this one to signify that he's changed, which isn't really doing much. Uh, put that inside of quotes because it's stirring that name. It's kind of a weird system that it uses strings to, to store these property changes. And then we also want to notify the mouse location string there and so when i do that then it will update anything it has these commands and the bindings i think so let's try it oops take the breakpoint off let's continue you are not updating you dirty dog not even drawing yourself why are you not doing that Oh, it's the data context. Oh my gosh. All right, that's why. All right, um, after all that, I need to put a line here. Context equals this. Wow. Moments of brilliance. Let's double check one thing. I'm sure that's what it is. Yep. That line right there breaks all the bindings if I don't do it. All right. There it is. Son of a gun. Something so easy and I killed 20 minutes trying to remember it. Okay. All right. So. All right, so let's go through this and let's see now that we are able to get our coordinates from our mouse move and we're setting our point in there. So now we need a click event.
mouse oh, mouse click and let's do it on a mouse up we got that there's our mouse up and now we can do so we're moving. So we want, let's see, point, point equals equals e dot get position within the main canvas and then I should be able to do a VM node and VM node new node is a new VM node and I want to do p dot x p dot y and then I need to add this guy nodes dot add new node and I think oops why not I Oops, not the little Y, big Y. All right, so now, it's not redrawing, because I need to tell it to redraw on user update. There we go. Now you can see we're adding points to our screen. Fairly simple. I'm so frazzled from that binding misadventure. Um, we'll edit that video down quite a lot as I sit there and go, oh yeah, dummy. So, all right, so here's what we're going to look at. So to kind of recap what we've done to this day, we're now able to add nodes anywhere that we want to click on this. The next thing that we could do then is and maybe we work on building beams in our next video. Let's do short little simple blurbs on this. Because we've done a, a couple of items already. Is that we can we can now go in and register once I have a node selected or or in place that this is the first one. And then if I click another one, then it will automatically start to start to hook our hook our beam to the two pair the last two nodes that were added to the system. Now, one of the things that we want to be able to do is be able to go to an existing node and click it and go, oh, I've already got a node there. So we've got a little bit of logic that we've got to work out. But I think we'll save that for the next video at this point. So we'll go ahead and we'll stop there for now. Um, thank you for bearing with me through that disaster. Um, data context equal this. Remember that. Data context equals this. Needed for the bindings. Should have been super easy. Let's get rid of this message because I don't need that anymore. Um, as always, I'll go back in and I'll add some some comments to, to things to kind of clean it up a little bit and then we should be in position to do all sorts of cool stuff now so um yeah anyway that's what we have so we'll start kind of working on this eventually all of this will go away probably in the next video because then we can start making our own just by simply clicking and stretching and doing whatever and we'll work on the the, the graphics and the appearance of stuff as well as we start to work on this so you know um, as always, if you found this remotely entertaining, please toss us a, um, a, a big thumbs up, you know, at the very least, I'm good for a laugh, you know, um, and we'll get better at this. Again, this is a new experience for us. We're trying to do live coding and sometimes I just don't quite think real fast and I'm just saying yeah, that data binding thing kind of got me and I wasn't going to do it and then I did it and well, anyway, you guys saw what happened. So anyway, um, thank you for your time and we will see you guys in our next go around. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and we'll see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.